Welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. And here's your host, Conrad Cushman. You're listening to Brain Buster Radio. Welcome to episode 51 of the Everything Pro Wrestling Podcast. Conrad Cushman alongside Robert Anderson and my main man from Ukes, Brian Williams, and we are here to give a preview for the G1 Supercard. Gentlemen, first and foremost, starting with Robert, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? Excellent, excellent. Brian, what's been going on, man? What up, what up? Doing good, man. Just, uh, you know, doing my thing, you know, plugging away, working in the podcast with, uh, with you cats today. Looking forward to this talk. Yes. Um, Brian Williams currently working at Ukes. That's where he's doing his work. My man, Robert, he's been on the podcast several times, and I thought these two would be perfect guests to talk about the G1 Supercard. But first and foremost, let me give a shout out to my new podcast network, Brain Buster Radio. Uh, we will have podcasts on there seven days a week. That's right. Every single day that you guys want to hear a wrestling podcast, you can come to us. We will have something every single day, and I will be on Saturdays. So make sure that you guys go type in Brain Buster Radio on however you listen to your podcast and click subscribe to hear us seven days a week. And at least click for me on Saturdays. You know, you know how it goes. Also, We've got merch at EPW. Thanks to Robert here. Go yeah, ahead. We work. We working. We working. Uh, we got our first couple designs out right now. Uh, we got the EPW logo and we got our EPF and W shirt designed painstakingly by your boy. <laughs> That's right. And if someone messages me wondering why it's not E F and P W, it's a play off the ECW shirt. Yes, I'll admit it. Paul Heyman, thank you, good sir. I know that you like to say people steal ideas without giving credit, so thank mm-hmm. you, Paul. Don't sue me. Um, but other than that, guys, make sure you go to tpublic.com slash user slash EPW if you guys want the shirt. It will be in the description box of this as well, along with both of these gentlemen's Twitter handles. If you want to talk some pro wrestling, video games, or something normal with them, hit them up. But guys, let's talk about this G1 Supercard preview. It's WrestleMania weekend, boys. It's the biggest weekend of the year for me. I'm already getting tired, and I got a long, (laughs) long couple weeks ahead of me here. Um, We have this show happening Saturday, April 6th, in the world's most famous arena in the United States, Madison Square Garden, New York City. Man. It's going down. It's going down for real, because... This is going to be a really tough show, and I'm going to start with Brian on this. Brian, did you ever think we would see a show in Madison Square Garden where the WWE is not involved at all? Oh, I got to say, man, uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I'm I'm sure I hope for it, you know, uh, but I honestly never thought that, uh, that, you know, MSG would be sold out by... uh, Ring of Honor, and it's, Ring of Honor in addition with New Japan, I didn't see that, you know, happening, but I was so glad that it did, and in fact, like, I think my excitement for this event, it peaked when they did, when, when they sold out the building, and then after that, I kind of lost interest in this thing, especially with my boys, uh, the Bucks and Cody Rhodes and everybody, you know, Mega, uh, kind of did their own thing, my enthusiasm, you know, kind of waned a little bit, but I gotta say, I'm just looking at the card. I got to say, this is going to be a damn good show, I think, man. Like, they, they, they're going to have to really go out of their way for this show to fucking bomb. I, I agree with that. Um... I, I just don't, I can't believe it. At one point, WWE tried to cock block this event. I don't know if you guys remember that. I remember. When I remember that. Vince definitely tried to play or hate. Um, Rob, what do you think? Give your thoughts on this WWE piece with it. Oh, well, you know, being WrestleMania weekend, you know, worlds collide. Worlds come together. Um, I felt they were they were kind of wrong trying to bogart the, the garden for themselves. I don't know if they wanted to run access there or something like that, but. No, they weren't trying to run access. They were just being jerks, dude. Vince, Vince, Vince just wants that for himself, dude, which makes zero sense. That guy is just 
who I don't know, dude. He just wants the pro wrestling business for himself, and he wants to be known for that arena, but he doesn't really run it anymore. He doesn't run exactly. Yeah. Like, like they don't even run that that, uh, that that venue anymore. Or they rarely do. So when they do, it's usually just like a house show. Yeah, on Christmas too. It's like a specialty mm-hmm. show. Yeah. Like they got the Barclay. When's the last time WWE actually sold out the Garden? Um, I don't. It has to be the last time they had like a pay per view or show there. Survivor Series. I don't know. Whatever. It oh, doesn't oh, matter. Oh. It doesn't matter because this isn't WWE's night. This is New Japan and ROH's night. Now, they've been teaming up for quite some time, and I like this tag team of them borrowing and exchanging talent, and we've got a hell of a card with a lot of things on the line here. But first, if you guys are interested in watching this event, you can do it on New Japan World. It's only $9 a month if you live in the States. I think it's well worth your money. Absolutely. You you have New Japan World. Yeah. Brian, you a subscriber as well to that? course man i've been a subscriber to it as soon as that thing launched yeah absolutely man you get it's definitely worth your bread also you could watch it on roh um or ring of honor club honor club and fight tv has it as well so no excuses for why you can't watch this event and pay for it people pay for the event so that they can finally see like oh this is what people want yeah we need more of this sorry sorry i hate that sometimes but let's talk about this event, man, these guys really want growth for both of their companies and they need to make some noise right now. And how important is it that this event succeeds, Robert? Oh, it's paramount. <laughs> they they, they got to succeed. I mean, they're going to succeed, but this they had a lot riding on this. <laughs> Brian, what do you think about that? I mean, how how important is it to both of these companies that this show goes well? Oh, uh, well, I mean, yeah, it's vital. But I think the most important thing that happened was just the fact that they did sell this arena out. So I think, you know, if you're a New Japan or ROH, it's like you're playing with house money at this at this point. You sold out the garden. You assembled, you know, what looks to be a really good, you know, uh, event on paper. So I think the hard work is done. Now these guys got to go out there. Hopefully just don't let the booking get in the way of, uh, of the matches, you know. It's like you got these guys, you know, don't get too cute. With the booking and a whole bunch of uh, you know uh, bullshit finishes, just you know play each promotion's respective strength, which is the the wrestlers they have on their roster and the strength of their matches. And I think this is, this could be you know a talking point coming out of you know WrestleMania weekend because there's a ton of shows happening. I mean you got NXT going on the same time. Was that the same day or the day before? They switched I mean, NXT. They, they switched it. As Robert was just saying, yeah, NXT was on Saturday originally, yeah. and then they so switched it. Friday. Yes, and Triple H's okay. theme was, why did he say they did that? It was during a conference call. He said, uh, oh, we don't want the fans to have to choose. Which, which I kind of believe. I though. respect right. Triple H for that. Yeah. That's awesome, yeah. Yeah, yeah cause nah, we, we know how the Hall of Fame is. Yeah. Now, I got a question for each <laughs> yeah. of you. I got a question for each of you guys. Do you think, let's say they weren't partnered up to this for, uh, what was it, Ring of Honor New Japan. If they weren't partnered for this show, could New Japan have sold this out or could Ring of Honor have sold this out alone? Oh. Can I kind of yeah, go ahead. I I think that New Japan could have sold this venue out on their own. I don't. I cannot say the same for Ring of Honor. I'm with Brian. See, I kind of feel yeah. the opposite of that. Oh, really? Because I, Ring of Honor has a bigger uh, bigger presence in the states, and New Japan they're trying to work on their Western expansion right now. They have the, I would say they have the financial ability. Well, Ring of Honor is backed by Sinclair, so they have that as well. But uh, I don't know. I think Ring of Honor would have had a better chance. I, I, you know what? Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. No, I, was, I, was, I was just counter uh, that. You know, maybe on any other weekend, but with this being WrestleMania weekend, and with the fact that you have all these fans coming out from all various parts of the of the country of the world flying in for this event, it's it's, it's very much an international crowd. And I think because of that, uh, I, have, yeah, I have no doubt in my mind that if New Japan put together, just announced the fact that they were running the garden, that they would sell that thing out. Because, I mean, it's, like I said, the week, the strength of the weekend is is, uh, is paramount about that. And honestly, with this whole relationship between ROH and New Japan, I've always felt that it's almost like ROH, like they need that partnership more than New Japan does. Uh, Lately, yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, I, I don't get. I, I get the sense that you know, if if, if new if they ever were to separate, I think ROH would be in a worse position than New Japan. Uh, 
And that's, I mean, I, I could be wrong about that, but just me looking at the optics and I think just the, uh, the buzz surrounding both promotions, I mean, I knew Japan is always kind of, there's always more interest in that promotion than there is in Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor to me, I hate, I'm not going to lie. They're like a, a better run impact. <laughs> Ooh, damn. No, Ooh. but um, I, to, to hop and piggyback off Brian's point with, all that like this is so tough for me to say this but i feel like ring of honor is being scary to the decisions that ecw once made of ecw kind of jumped right in and they were like we want a tv deal we want to do this we want to do that whatever they expanded too fast in the business sense and i feel like ring of honor has been dipping their toe in the water for so long it's like the kid who won't jump into the pool it's like dude just jump in the pool no, no, no. I'm going to ease my way in. It's like, dude, just jump in the pool. It's going to be way easier if you do that than you trying to ease one foot in at a time. And Ring of Honors just seems like they've been in a stagnant spot since like oh yeah. five, oh seven. I would say, you know, honestly, I would, you know, since. I would say since, since Joe you know, left. Sinclair purchase. Yeah. Because you know, uh, I, I feel the same way as you, uh, Conrad, is that there's just, there's just a lack of, uh, Energy and momentum with Ring of Honor, at least for you know, for me, as someone who used to follow the product a lot more closely, I just kind of I don't anymore. And I think a lot of it is has to do with the fact that yeah, they're with Sinclair, and Sinclair has a lot of money behind them, but they don't seem willing to invest that money into Ring of Honor. They just they felt stagnant uh, for the for the past, at least for the past four or five years. Yeah, it's not. I was going to say it feels like it's not a priority for Sinclair. It's like a pet project. Like oh yeah, we got Ring of Honor. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Look at this cool thing over here. Yeah, I mean, they've signed some talent, and we're going to talk about them throughout this. So let, let's get right into previewing some of the matches. And the first they match, got great they, got great they do. Promotions. They do. And we're going to see some of them here. We have the pre show match first the Honor Rumble. Uh, the only name confirmed right now is Jushin Thunder Liger. Man, that dude's retiring, bro. Do you know how bad I just want to do a show solo, like, dedicated to him? Which probably will happen in a year because oh. Jushin Thunder Liger is one of my favorites. Ever since I saw him in 1991, I believe, against Flying Brian Pillman, I've been hooked. Like, that was my guy ever since. I'm like, yo, that dude's sweet. His mask is sweet. I want to create him in every video game I play. Shout out to you, Brian. And it's just awesome to have all that stuff in there. Like, just love Jushin Thunder Liger. But um, what do you what do you guys want to see from this? I know we don't have a lot of information here, but what do you want to see from the Honor Rumble, Rob? I feel like this won't go more than ten minutes. It's just gonna be like a showcase of who who we brought over to the show. Um, I like to see um cheeseburger take it. <laughs> cheeseburger, cheeseburger. cheeseburger. <laughs> Yo, it's something I, different, man. People love cheeseburgers. Yo, when he comes here in Buffalo, I'm I not going to lie. We go crazy for cheeseburger. Absolutely. Like, it's nuts how over he is. Um, Brian, what do you want to see from this? Uh, Yeah, I'll probably. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a big fan of these Battle Royals type things. I mean, they're cool, you know, get everybody on the show and all that. Uh, I guess, you know, since you mentioned that, I didn't even know that a uh, lagger was going to be in this. But since you're saying that he's the only one announced. You know, hey, give it to Lager. You know, give him a give him this win on his road to his farewell match in next year's uh, Wrestle Kingdom. I, I would like to see that, and I thought that at first, but I come down to cheeseburger and uh, and Lager. Mm -hmm. that, that, that'd be a pretty cool uh, final two. I'm gonna go with Ishii. To win this bad boy because he better be on this card. Okay. I know I haven't seen his name pop up anywhere specifically yet, but that's my boy. Stone and pit bull. Yeah, and I want to see some people get knocked out. So <laughs> put my man Ishii on the card. Uh Silas Young also was someone who I thought could pop up in this because he was just complaining about not being on the show. And that was hard. He called ROH like his wife. And I was like, oh dang, <laughs> you do all this work oh, for yeah, him. And I was like, I saw that tweet, bro. I was like scrolling past this. That's Hopefully. real, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tom Selleck mustache. You know how it goes. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the Honor Rumble should be fun. Um, it's always a good time. I don't know. Can't complain about it. Next match. This is one of the ones I'm definitely looking forward to. This is going to be the opening match. The opening effing match. I had to throw my pen down for that, dude. We have title for title on the line. And I got hyped at ROH 17th anniversary when this was announced. We have the never open weight champion versus the ROH TV champion. We have Will Ospreay, who is the never open weight champ, versus the Ariel Assassin, versus Jeff Cobb. 
my boy, <laughs> the ROH TV champion. Dude, this is going to be a great match. Oh, it's going to be yeah. gr- nonstop action. <laughs> Balls to the wall. Dude, I can't believe they let both titles be on the line for this. Um, both guys can wrestle. Both guys can fly. Um, what What are you guys expecting out of this? I'm expecting, like I said, nonstop action. It's going to be, uh, I give this maybe like 15, 20 minutes. This is going to be a long show. <laughs> J- Dude, Jeff Cobb is like an athletic Kurt Angle, Scott Steiner, Samoa Joe, like baby. Like, I don't even yeah. know. Like, they, you just mix them all together. That's perfect. That's and, perfect. Dude. <laughs> Oh man, just dude, I've loved this dude since Lucha Underground since I saw him under the mask of uh Matanza. Uh, Brian, what do you think of this match? Yeah, uh, I'm like you guys, like, I'm I'm really looking forward to this match. Uh, this might, yeah, this is probably like my match I'm looking for, like, number two match on this show that I'm looking forward to the most. And yeah, the one thing I can that we can we can obviously both agree on, all three of us, is that this match is definitely going to deliver. Uh, I don't think I think it's impossible for these two to have anything less than a great match. The thing that really had to trip me is the fact that it's title for title, and that winner takes all. And in trying to figure out who's going to win this, like man, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know because both promotions are pushing these guys pretty, you know, pretty hard. And uh, then Jeff Cobb on the ROH 17, he beat um, what was that guy? Uh, Shane uh, uh, Shane Taylor. Shane Taylor, he won that match, right, Kyle? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 240 yeah, Islands. I heard, I, heard, I heard that was a good match, too. Um, yeah, I, yeah. this, this is going to be amazing. And I expect Will Osprey to uh, lift up Cobb and try to hit him with that Stormbreaker finish, which uh, that'll be a pretty dope uh, fight. Brian, you been reading my notes over here? That was the next <laughs> thing I was going to talk about. He has hit the Stormbreaker on Cobb before, so I'm expecting some teases of that. Will Ospreay has really gotten stronger, and I appreciate the fact that he has chilled out on his style a little bit. That's why he's going to lose this match, though. He's losing the never open weight title because I think they're going to do more with him in the um, the heavyweight division over in New Japan. You, you know what, dude? You know what, that, that's a good prediction. That's a good prediction. Yeah, I got Jeff Cobb for this one. Who you got? I'm taking Jeff Cobb. Brian? Uh, yeah, what well, hey. You just convinced me with that. That's some sound logic right there. Because, uh, yeah, and, and I'm with you. I, I, I appreciate how Osprey, he's, uh, he's put some more size on him. Like, I, I've always been a fan of his as far as in rework. But, you know, I the one thing that kind of stuck out to me is like, dude, like, you just, come on, dude, you don't look all that athletic. And, I, and, I, and I'm not even like a body guy. Like, you got to be all jacked up and everything. But I'm like, at least try to look like an athlete. So I appreciate that he got a little size and, you know, all of it, all that. So, uh, and yeah, like you said, uh, they are grooming him to be like that next. I think I think New Japan sees in him. Probably now that Omega's gone, they can probably put him as like that top, you know, uh, foreign uh, attraction. God, I you know, hope so. so. <laughs> yeah. So, I, yeah, but, I, but yeah, I go with Jeff Cobb. I think Cobb will take this. All right, that's yeah. a that's our first trifecta. What, you got something to add to this? Uh, just real quick on Will Ospreay. He had to bulk up. He had to change his look up because he, he lost his flying mate. Ricochet signed with WWE. Who's going to fly around with him like that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, you got Bandito and Roosh, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking of Roosh, that's the next match. We have um, Dalton Castle and the boys. That was for UKC Classic uh, <laughs> versus Roosh. Uh, this should be a really fun showcase match, in my opinion. But this match leaves a lot of questions open. Like, Dalton Castle was built around being the ROH champion. I thought that he was going to get a long run after defeating Cody. And then it all kind of felt like for nothing. He got hurt. Yeah, dude. But I don't know how – and I don't know how serious the back injury is. Maybe one of you two guys know more about it. But I don't know how bad this dude's messed up if he lost his opportunity. I mean, I don't know what's next for him. And Roosh, bro. The talent behind this dude is amazing. The former CMM, CMLL, easy for me to say, star is going to shine. I think he's really, really good. Um, Go ahead, Rob. Uh, well, I'll skip right to my prediction. I'm picking Roosh to take this because he's a new kid on the block. Uh, they're gonna, this is going to be a showcase. It's going to have a couple comedy spots with Dalton Castle and the boys. Maybe he'll try to flip on them. The boys will catch him or something. Uh I don't know. I'm excited for this one. I've always been a big fan of Dalton Castle. Go, Brian, what, what do you got for this, man? Uh, yeah, I mean, you mentioned the whole Dalton Castle thing. So, you know, someone who kind of 
dips my toe into all ways every now and again. Yeah, the biggest thing that I constantly heard about him is his injury, right? Like, is it his neck, his back? Like, it's always, I'm always reading about how injured he is, yet he's still, he's still wrestling. Uh, See, I don't know how much of that is storyline and real, though. Right, because he wrestles in a back brace. So I'm like, like the last time we saw him, he was wearing the back brace, wasn't he? So it's like, I don't know, dude. Is he really hurt, or is this just kind of kayfabing it up a little bit? Okay, okay. Uh, Yeah, because I I like Dalton Castle. I think he's a good performer. Uh, But yeah, I mean, Roosh, this match is for Roosh. You know, he's new to the company. Uh, This is going to be a great opportunity. I'm sure there's probably a lot of people watching this event, and this will probably be their first time seeing uh, Roosh. I'm actually new to the cat myself. I didn't start. I, he didn't jump on my radar until I saw him show up in uh, MLW, and uh, and I became an instant fan. You know, so uh, so yeah, I think uh, this match is, is here to uh, showcase him. I'm sure you know Castle will, you know, of course, get his shit in, and I expect this to be a an entertaining match, a good match. You know, I don't think it'll go very long, uh, but yeah, I think Roosh will take this. I I got Roosh taking this as well, so that's another trifecta of an agreement. Either we're going to be really right or really wrong about a lot of this, boys. I think yeah, this, I know, right? is, this is and this. Like, Don Castle doesn't need this win. Like if he wins this, what's he what can get out of it? You know what I mean? It's like it seems that there's going to be a lot of uh, momentum or storyline behind him right now. I, I feel like the winner is a future number one contender, though, for the ROH title. I mean, they set this up at the ROH 17th anniversary show with Dalton Castle on commentary, and then him getting in uh, Roosh's face. And back to what we were talking about too earlier in the uh, program. When we spoke about ROA signing talent, this was one guy I was surprised that they got. Like there was like a week or two there where they were just announcing people they signed, and I'm like, how? How did this happen? Well, you can thank Andrade for that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. Because, uh, there's rumors going around that he convinced Roosh and Bandito not to come to WWE. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's 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 true. But yeah. That was a good advice. He's a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian. The tears in my eyes have to stop. And that's why you don't have a WrestleMania match, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for the WrestleMania preview. <laughs> um, let's get into one last match here before we take a break. The Women of Honor Championship. Robert, why don't you introduce this one, man? All right. So we got Mayu Iwatani who's the champion versus Kelly Klein. Uh, Iwatani, if you're not familiar, is from the Stardom promotion. Really talented. Well, everybody that comes to Stardom, nine times out of ten, they're going to be one of the probably one of the best in the world. I don't know what they do to them girls over there, but <laughs> <laughs> they, they, crank, they crank them out. Like, at one after one after one, it's just and talented. Then, <laughs> and, and then they go somewhere else to be bigger stars. I like it, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like her a lot. She's really good. She impressed me on that last – um, what was it? Ring of Honor 17th anniversary. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was a really that was one of the best women of women of honor matches. But like have those matches under delivered to you guys? Like is the is the how do I what do I want to call it? The division women of honor. Like, is it really up there for you, or is it kind of just like, oh, you're just doing this because well, women's wrestling is hot right now? For a while, they were just focusing on like three or four girls, and Madison Rain was one of those girls. Who cares about Madison Rain? <laughs> oh, oh, you saw what happened to her live when yeah. she got in the ring with us. <laughs> uh, get her out, <laughs> get her out. With all due respect to Madison Rain, I uh, mean, uh, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll move on. I'm being that. polite, I'm being <laughs> polite. Uh, Brian, what, what do you think of the women of honor promotion and stardom? I mean, it's like the, the Women of Honor, yeah, I mean, yeah, I just, I don't hear much about this division in Ring of Honor. And it, it feels like an afterthought, which is funny because, like, you know, Ring of Honor, the whole thing is built around the work rate of their performers and all that. And, you know, when they, they when they announced they were going to have, you know, the women's uh, title and their own division, like, I got excited. I'm like, okay, because especially seeing how, how well NXT's female division was doing and and even TNA or Impact back in the day had a really strong women's division. So I kind of assumed like Ring of Honor would take this and just, you know, get this out of the park, but they really haven't. Now, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's, they're just having I, a hard time getting it. I don't see a draw. Like, I don't see anybody yeah. that you could build this around. I mean, M- see, I feel like if, if they would have kept Beta Scott going, because she was like the heart and soul of that, because she was like the lady of Ring of Honor for years and then she started wrestling, they lost Deanna Perrazzo. Uh, Brandy Rose is doing her thing until she broke her shoulder. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just in a really weird spot. And um, isn't 
I was I keep wanting to call her Emma to Neil Dashwood. She's hurt too, right? Yeah, she's hurt too, but she she could have been the stone like yeah. Stone pillar yeah, of this I division. I wanted her to be that cornerstone of which the division is built around. Because I was happy for her when she, when she uh, climbed the ring of honor. I've always been a fan of hers. But yeah, you know, she's been dealing with these injuries and everything. Yeah, and let me show some love to Kelly Klein, too, because it sounds like we just made her an afterthought. Well, we were, we were getting there. Yeah, we were, but <laughs> we 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 we, uh, we fandomed over stardom and what's happening with the division. Kelly Klein's been one of the brighter lights, I feel, of the division. Truth. And... It's so funny. She finally wins the title um, at, was it Madison Square Garden, right? Or no, the um, Hammerstein Ballroom, yeah, excuse yeah. me. She won the title there. She gets this big moment, and then instantly, I go on Twitter, yo, this chick lost the belt already? <laughs> and I was just like, what happened? And I think it, they're trying to play off like her cockiness to all of this, so I expect her to ragdoll Mayu in this match. Like I expect her to, I want to see some China Terry Runnels ragdolling, like, yo, you better smack her, <laughs> slam her down. And show her who's boss. But in this match, I finally expect Kelly Klein to pick up the victory. That's my prediction. Oh, we got our first disagreement. Ooh. Only reason I say this because we picked two Ring of Honor talents already to win. And I know this isn't Ring of Honor versus New Japan, but they can't give them all the Ring of Honor so far. So I'm going with Iwatani. <laughs> okay. Brian, the tiebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, so I'll, be, I'll be straight up honest with both of you. I'm not too familiar with either one of these women. <laughs> I knew well, the burial was I'm coming. Off, I'm off, I'm off, I was just Googling Kelly Klein. Like, I, I, I know I, I've heard of Iwatani, but I'm looking at Kelly Klein now. I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who are you going with? Kelly Klein. Okay. All right. All right, Brian, the streak continues with us. Sorry, Rob. It's all good. <laughs> Don't worry. I might cry, though, because I, I wouldn't have picked Mayu to win when she won the title from her at some random taping. Like, mm -hmm. what the hell? But, folks, we're going to take our first break into this. We've given you a lot of information to digest. Make sure you keep it locked. We'll have a little sponsor segment in here, and then we'll be right back to finish talking the G1 Supercard Preview. This is Brian Mazik, the hardest working man in sports and gaming, and you are listening to my man Conrad Cushman and everything pro wrestling. All right, guys, and we're back with part two of the G1 Supercard preview. We are on match number five. And first and foremost, before we get to this match, let me give a shout out to my man Brian Mazik, who led us in to part two of this. Uh, shout out to him. He will be on my WrestleMania and NXT TakeOver preview with Brian Williams. Uh, this is going to be fan-freaking-tastic, I tell you. First time I had two Brians in the room at the same time, and I think it's going to be a tremendous, tremendous preview. That's going to get a little confusing, though. <laughs> what? Brian, why don't you take this one? Which one? <laughs> oh, don't worry. Someone's going to have to be B-squared. So B -squared. It's, it's <laughs> I could be beat up. Beat up. <laughs> So shout out to San Andreas. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, by the way, greatest game of all time. I saw Brian like that. Is it the best PS2 game? I'm going Warriors. <laughs> Ooh. I think I, Grant, San Andreas was so good. Not only is it the best PS2 game, it destroyed open world games for me ever since. Oh, that's facts. I've never been able to play an open world game as good as San Andreas. That's ever. facts. That's I'm facts. Like, Yo, listen, this isn't going to give anything away. This will be the last thing about video games that I swear we'll get back to uh, this this G1 Supercard preview. But every time I drive past the street going towards my mom's house, oh, Grove, Grove Street, street <laughs> and my name's CJ, I'm like, home. At least it was, so I messed everything all up. My brother always laughs every time I say that. He's like, dang, dude, how a video game can change your life. <laughs> uh, oh, and who had the cheat code on their arm uh, from uh, basketball? Some shooter, uh... I forgot what his name was. Yeah, one of the NCAA basketball players had the, the infinite code, ammo, the infinite ammo code on his arm for a tattoo. Love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll find a picture after. Yeah. Oh, that's the classic, man. Love, yeah, love it. But speaking of the streets, we have a New York City street fight open challenge with my man Bully Ray. Now I don't know if you guys like heels, but I appreciate some good Bully Ray. That man can get some heat. Ever since that ECW was a heat wave, <laughs> that is my favorite my. promo in ECW. Quick little story about that. When that first happened, my grandpa was the one that got me in to watch ECW. He used to call me up Saturday mornings, like 8, 9 o'clock. 
hey, you know, wrestling's on, right? Turn it on. I just see all this wild crap going on with freaking, what's her name? Um, Kimono Wanalea dancing naked on the building or whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> so he calls me up for this bully, for this uh, Bubba Ray and Devon segment. But they're sitting there talking about moms teaching their daughters oral pleasures. And <laughs> that, that is uh, great. The lady <laughs> spits on him and he spits back on him. That is classic. Man. <laughs> Starting riots, man. That's the heel work, man. He'll bravo, sirs. Yeah, I thought he was definitely going to get killed that night. <laughs> Shout out to Atlas Security, by the way. <laughs> you bald, fat mother. <laughs> so this is an open challenge, guys. I think, in my mind, I have two people who it could be for this, but I want to hear what you guys think. So, Brian, we're going to kick it to you first, my friend. Who do you want to have answer this? It could be anybody, man. I'll tell. I'm gonna. I've, I'll tell you one thing. I heard that was really wild. At afterwards, I'll let you guys go first. I'll tell you a wild one that I heard that I'm like, this is not happening. All right. Uh, first of all, I'm always wary about any match where the, where the opponents or the partners are to be announced. Because these kind of gimmicks always, always fall flat. Uh, they always get excited. It's never the person you want. And I have no idea who this could be. But the one person who I hope it isn't. Swaggle. Is fucking Dreamer. I was just about to say that. <laughs> and I, and, and this, is, this is not me taking any shots at Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer's dope. I like him a lot. But this, if, if it's him, that would be the most anticlimactic thing ever. The crowd would boo the shit out of that, I think. <laughs> uh, so, Tommy, hopefully he's, he's busy doing something else that night. Uh, stay clear of this match. Um, <laughs> but beyond that, honestly, I have no idea who this could be, man. And I've heard, it's definitely not going to be CM Punk. I heard rumors that CM Punk might be showing up for this thing. If CM Punk was going to be on the show, maybe advertising it. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. I'm sorry. I can't stop laughing since he said Tommy Dreamer was going to get booed. Oh, <laughs> man. Yo, Tommy Dreamer has to be like one of the most overused, like to be announced opponents in history. Right? These are Every facts. Time, like, like they always use him in this spot. Like it doesn't matter what promotion. Like he's captain uh, MLW. He's, he's been everywhere lately. Does House of Hardcore yeah. have a show this weekend or that next weekend? Um, House of Hardcore. I don't know if they do. I know House of Glory does. Dude, I printed that sheet. There are so many damn shows. I can't keep up with it. Yeah, that's a shit. Um. <sighs> Yeah, I'm sorry. Outside of, like, I mean, I mentioned seeing a bunch, but, like, like, I don't, is there anybody in ROH who's, like, injured who's been, who's been gone for a while? Oh, we're not flipping, we're going to flip Gordon hurt again. But he just wrestled he, him. Flip Gordon just got cleared. It better not be yeah, Flip Gordon. It's, it's not good. Flip already beat him. What's he got to prove? Okay. Okay. Yeah, man, I, I, I have no idea who this could be. Rob, who yeah, is it? Would it not be Tommy Trent? That's all I got. What I would love... Since it's going to be a New York City street fight and um, Bully Ray needs to be taught a lesson, bring Minoru Suzuki out there. Beat the <laughs> hell out of this, man. <laughs> oh, I like that. Give me Suzuki. Like Come on, dude. <laughs> see, Tell me you I wouldn't like want to see that. He'd be my third choice. He was, he was actually in my considerations, but I think he's too old, and then I could just hear, do you know who I am? Do you know what you just said? What? I know. <laughs> I, listen, I can Can you see Bully Ray like beating that man with a belt, yelling, do you know who I am? And I'm like, yo, you better chill out, bro. <laughs> like, this is terrible. I got two people. I think he was thinking about on the New Japan side. I got two people. I think it's got to be a New Japan. Oh, you said Ishii? Yeah, I mean, only because you mentioned this man must know my notes, folks, because I had Ishii written down in parentheses, but that's not my pick. I got right. Juice Robinson being because he doesn't have a match, and I'm very surprised by this. They had him come out with that new faction, and I just thought Juice Robinson would have a spot on this show, and I think Juice can really use some juice on this. And <laughs> put him in this match. That's just me. Now, I've heard people talk this crazy talk with Kenny Omega. I heard him like doing some uh, interview for the CEO, you know, the big event AEW is doing. And these dudes were up here like talking crazy, like, yeah, Kenny Omega said you never know where you're going to see him again for New Japan. I'm like, yo, you need to pump the brakes, bro. He is not coming in. Like, that relationship needs time to heal for a second still. I think they're yeah. pissed at him. But I don't think it's Omega. I got they lowballed him. They lowballed him. 
hey, listen, you got to make the right offer for a man to stay. If he's got options on the table, he's got options. But who do you guys have winning this one? I'm going with the two be announced. I don't care who it is. It has to be. It has to be, right? (laughs) Whoever it is, even if it's Tommy Dreamer. Trifecta? Yo, stop. Leave my man Tommy alone. He just bought Oreos. I saw him on Twitter. Shout out to you, Tommy Dreamer. Man, you lucky Brandon's not here. (laughs) (laughs) Why, he hates Tommy Dreamer? He hates him. Oh, don't worry. Who else else in New Japan that's not on this show? Because the the, the cats you mentioned, you guys mentioned are all good ones. But is there anybody else? Um, uh, Is there someone that they could bring in that you guys would care about? Is uh, Toby Makabe? Is he booked? Who? Makabe? Uh, No. No, Oh, Makabe, yeah. Yeah. Um, that would act, that that would be you know they're, they're similar you know uh, you, you, styles and you know Michael Bay he's he's all, he's like he's a big brawler anyway. At first, like, at first I thought he was gonna say Michael Nakazawa, but Michael Nakazawa. <laughs> Nakazawa. Oh, sorry, inside joke. Watch being the elite guys. Yeah. Great show, great oh, show. What about Shingo? Ooh, yeah. I didn't think about Shingo. Yeah, it's a good person. Shingo and Bully. Yeah, dude, bully. I like Bully Ray, man. Oh yeah, I love him. I was hoping, I was hoping to get Bully Ray the, on his last uh, time in WWE. That's what that was my hope. Me too, man. You know what I think would be cool if they want to have an actual street fight. If they want to bring a legend out, what about your boy Masato Tanaka? Ooh, nah, you can't do that. Because there's something that I have an expectation that has to happen, <laughs> and I cannot have that happen to any man anymore in wrestling. So, no. <laughs> Shout out to Mike Awesome. Rest in peace, man. R.I.P. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. He was great. All right. So, we're all going to agree that the 2B announced has to win this. Now, we're going to get yeah. into, this is where it gets good. Evil hand rub for me right now. If you guys can hear it on the mic. <laughs> Hands aren't too ashy right now, but... This is this is where it starts to get good. Our sixth match on the card is going to be for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. This reminds me of fond memories when me and Brian were talking about Wrestle Kingdom 13 on Christmas night. And, man, we got a card here for this one. So we're going to have Ishimori, who is the champion still, versus Dragon Lee versus Bandino. This has promise written all over for me at least ishimori has finally gonna get the opportunity i should say to actually wrestle guys who aren't veterans older who aren't moving around as well and i can finally showcase what this man can do to someone else because if i told you to watch his match with liger liger's not the old liger anymore i get it it's just one of those sentimental things and i like it um but he gets his chance to show off in this one and dragon lee I don't know too much about him. I've seen him wrestle here and there, but I don't know enough about him. And Bandino, my first time seeing him was all in. I was wowed. I've seen him wrestle two or three other times since then in between MLW and Ring of Honor. Dope. I'm 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 sold on it. Rob, what do you got for this match, man? What are you thinking? Okay. So you gotta run with me on this one. I know Ishimori just got this belt. I got Dragon Lee taking this. And the reason why I say this, the reason why I say this. Hiromu Takahashi should be coming back soon. Dragon Lee's the one that broke his neck. Built-in story right there. Shout out to my man Takahashi. I miss him actually. Um, yeah, that's a that's a. I did I not think Darryl. about that. <laughs> he was Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> <Dude. laughs> They got to bring back Daryl with a neck brace. <laughs> Has, hashtag Daryl merch for EPW. <laughs> Daryl, buy the shirt, man. But um, that's I did not think of that, dude. I am dumbfounded right now. That's a really good idea. Damn, that's a good idea. Brian, on you, good sir. I, I'm hoping you can educate me a little bit here because Brian owned me in that uh, that <laughs> predictions for Wrestle Kingdom. So go ahead, Brian. Do, do your damage here. What do you got? Uh, well, no, I mean, my, my picks are going one. Uh, hey, Rob, that was a good... You know, good point. The whole uh, if Takashi does come back, that is kind of a little built-in thing you got with Dragon Lee. I think I think the title stays uh, on Ishimori, uh, and I expect this match to be about twelve minutes of nonstop action, bell to bell. This is going to be insane. And I get what you're saying about you know finally seeing Ishimori working with guys, you know, uh, like his his peers. Like no one's going to have to slow down for anything. This is going to be. Three, three of the best high flyers 
pin, you know, pinballing or pinballing all over each other. Uh, this is going to be just an athletic two to force, I think. I th- and, uh, and I think he should. I think he should want to retain because uh, I mean, Dragon Lee. He's not, at least to my knowledge, like he's not on. Uh, he's not. He's not on any of these rosters, right? Doesn't he wrestle primarily in a? He signed. CMLL? Didn't he? I don't know if he's or signed CMLL. or not. I think it's CMLL. I th- I thought he was signed. No, he's he's ROH. I have that in my notes. Mm. I believe he signed to Ring of Honor now. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, man. Might change things, yeah, I, but they have a talent exchange. It makes yeah. sense, still. It still makes sense. Like if you have to send someone over, you're not going to send your top guy. You're going to be like, "Yo, Dragon Lee, hold it down over there for us for a little bit." I'm I'm cool with yeah, it. Dra- and Dragon Lee's incredible. I mean, I I don't know. I'm, I'm, I've probably seen more matches than you, Conrad, but it's not like I've seen like his whole body of work. But the shit that I have seen, I mean, the dude's incredible. Um, you know, three of these guys are. And then I was like, you, the first time I saw uh, Bandito was uh, at All In. And, uh, yeah, he, he impressed in a major way. Dude, and, and think about not, that. That match only had, like, five or ten minutes. They were rushing through that match. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, yeah. this dude impressed me in that quick a time where I'm like, yo, I got to see him again. Surrounded by all those other talents in that match, and he still stood out. Like, that's a testament to him. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I'm picking the board pick. I think uh, Ishimori retains. I just don't see, like, why he would move it off of him right now, especially with, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe he's looking too in advance, but you know, you got the best of the supers uh, a few months out after this. I think just keeping the title on him for the moment, just you know, keep that title steady for that uh, division. That's I'm, my pick. I'm with Brian on that one. I think that you have to roll with Ishimori. And I think now that you said that, you could tell an incredible story too of Takahashi after having to come back and battle Dragon Lee, get the respect, earn it, and now you're what's standing in my way. I want my belt back. Right, Daryl? Yeah. Yeah. Right. right yeah. Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I got a question for you guys. Do you think this ends on a finisher or a roll-up? Because I can see a roll-up easy. I'm going to go with a finisher. No, it's got to end on something. Yeah. Hopefully it's something more impactful than a roll-up. Uh, yeah, I'll go, I'll go finish. Don't worry, we won't see any dumb baby face <laughs> syndrome here either. And Dragon Lee's taking a pin, I'm assuming, with you guys. <laughs> um... Mm. I got Dragon Lee taking the pin if you guys are picking Ishimori. Yeah, because Bandino just... I was surprised Bandino lost to Roosh at um, the ROH 17th anniversary. So, yeah, I think Dragon Lee has to eat this one a little bit. There's time, though. I know. Bandino's selling those masks like crazy, so... Yeah, hey, yeah. You know what? You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I mean, I'm still, I'm still sticking with my pick, but I would not be surprised to see some uh, Bullet Club shenanigans popping off in this match, too. Uh, maybe a bad luck file or something coming out to assist their boy Ishimori. I'm just saying, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. And if, that, and if there is an affairs like that, then a roll-up becomes even more likely, but I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Speaking of bad luck, why is he a biker now? <laughs> maybe he just started watching Sons of Anarchy too. <laughs> <laughs> that was an offline chat, folks. If you wonder what we're talking about. Uh Shout out to the Bullet Club. I don't want to get on their bad side because uh, we saw what happened to what culture. <laughs> What's going to happen to what culture? <laughs> stop. Stop. <laughs> so very cool, though. Um, dude, we talked about all these title matches and all that. This next one really has my attention. It goes back to what Brian said. The whole title versus title changes everything. And it's kind of like, damn, I don't know who to pick now. I'm kind of in a messed up spot. And this one... Was re- this is probably the second hardest match I sat here and like thought about for a long time. Changed my mind. I was racking my brain. It's for the IWGP and ROH Tag Team Titles, both belts on the line. It's gonna now be a fatal four way tag match, bro. It started off as the Gorillas of Destiny versus the Briscoes. I was marking out. Then. PCO and Brody King end up winning the tag team titles. I'm still marking out. By the way, did you know that PCO went to WrestleMania 10 as the tag team champions? Think about how much time has went past since 1994, and now he's going into the same arena as a tag team champion again? Shout out to PCO, man. I ain't messing with that dude. He's crazy. And hey, Shout out to your research, brother. That's, that's a dope fact. Oh, that was just up here. That was random. <laughs> <laughs> this is why this is everything pro wrestling. Um, 
But we, ah, oh, dude, so much stuff, dude. We got Evil and Sonata in this match as well. And I got some stuff to say about them, or at least half of them as their team. And the Briscoes, who are always just great. I love Jay and uh, Mark Briscoe. Yeah. Dude. Yo, Somebody I, gonna bleed. I'm so glad I'm the host of this show because I'm kicking I'm kicking this to Brian first. Brian, uh, we no, no, I'm kicking it right back to you, brother. <laughs> you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Go ahead, Brian. I'll tell you who I don't have winning is Evil and Sonata. And the reason why. Oh, we got beef. Yo, Sonata's moving on to the heavyweight title. They're grooming that man. I I do too, but I think it's a slow groom. Go ahead, finish your point. I'm not even gonna talk. Um, since it's for both titles. I got I got a God winning. Okay, all right, I feel it, and I I, I just say that Tama Tonga deserves a lot more than he what he gets. <laughs> Tom, yo, Tama Tonga definitely ribbed on uh, someone who I follow on Twitter real bad. He talked about her forehead in a video. She has it pinned to the top of her thing. She thought it was hey. funny though, but I was just like, dang, savage. Um, are they coming dressed up like Power Rangers when they come out again? Hey, it was the or VR troopers. What, what was that it supposed was to not, be? <laughs> it was the cyborgs from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'll let that rock, dude. I'll let it rock. Um, yeah, dude. I this man said VR Troopers. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Gorillas of Destiny are the truth. I definitely like them. They were my secondary pick for this. But, dude, I this can't. Hard, dude, this is hard because you the Briscoes are a mainstay. You could always go with them because they're solid. You know what they're going to do. And they're going to whoop somebody's ass. Somebody's going to bleed. That's all I got to say. And, and then and, and then Villa Enterprise, they just won these. The At the, the 17th party. anniversary in the main event. Yeah. So this is a quick turnaround, but didn't G- G.O.D. just won them too not too long ago. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, dude, yeah, this, this, tough. This to me was the hardest match to, to pick a winner on out of everything. I, I, I was like, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm like you. I'm a big fan of uh, G.O.D. as well. Uh, I've been a big fan of Tomatango for a long time, so I'm glad he's finally getting uh, a little more uh, – Attention in, you know, his way. Uh, shit, I, I'm just gonna blindly pick at my, my phone here and pick a team. Uh, shit, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll give you some, I'll buy you some time. I'll buy you some time. Okay, okay. So, to me, this is a tough one. I had the Gorillas of Destiny. I'm racking my brain, but Robert brought up a point that I was thinking. No disrespect to evil. But Sonata's that boy. I'm telling you right now, Sonata will be the IWGP heavyweight champion one day. Guaranteed. I think that Sonata is one of the best right now in New Japan. And Sonata's just, he's ready. And I think that this will hold him over until he's ready for that push. You give him the tag belts and then you can kind of tell a story with him and Evil. Like, well, nah, bro. I really did not need to be with you anymore. I don't I don't know if they ended on a nice note or if Sonata goes heel on them, but well it's still in uh Los and Gobernables de Japón. Yeah. So yeah, I guess still be brothers in arms. I guess but he could it doesn't have to be like even a it could just be a thing with like all right Sonata I'm gonna I'm gonna go separate maybe bring somebody else in from uh from the factory. What happened? What happened? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> little little uh, off camera shenanigans here. Somebody, you know, you got you got the sign up says you're recording. This is live, folks, by the way. And you know, someone doesn't read the sign, and then they look in. So it happens. <laughs> it happens from time to time. But yeah, dude, I'm going with Evil and Sonata. Dude, you have to let Sonata do this. I'll have to think more about what happens with him and Evil later on down the line. But I say you give him the belts now. Let them get that last good run in, and then whatever you're going to do, you're going to do for your device for the story. Brian, I bought you enough time, right. good sir. And it was uh, time, time was spent because I finally got my pick. Uh, so looking at this, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the length of everybody's title reigns out of the equation since that's like a non factor anyway. And I'm looking at all these teams, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm trying to figure to myself, now, who, who needs this the most? And that's Villain Enterprises. Uh, they're a new faction. They're a new team. You know, putting the belts back on GLD and the Stavis team already, as much as I love them, like, what does that really do? What, what, that win is not really going to elevate them any further. The same with, with, with uh, the Briscoes, who I love. You know, uh, 
And then even mm-hmm. and then lost Eagle Benevolence, you know, they just phones. Like these are all established teams. I think if they really want to get behind and like, you know, keep this building enterprise and make this a thing, I kind of feel like you gotta you gotta put it on PCO and uh and Brody King. And uh, and this will allow them. Have they, been, have they been to Japan yet for any kind of tours of New Japan? I think Brody King's been over there. I'm quite sure PCO's wrestled over there in his career, but not lately. I mean, recently though, like since they signed with the Ring of Honor. Not that I can think of. I, I haven't yeah, seen them over there. Maybe a Jean Pierre yeah. Lafitte. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think they've been as, as a stable. So I think you know, have, letting them win, giving them both of these two companies' uh, tag titles, and then having them you know do tours with each. I don't know. I, I think I think they would get over in an amazing way, like in a major way, if they go to Japan. I think the, uh, the Japanese fans would take to them. So, oh, they would love PCO. That's what I mean. Yeah, and the fact that PCO is like 51 years old, doing all these fucking incredible high spots and shit. This guy's a machine. Damn, that's a good point. See, you can't listen to anybody on this because they're going to convince you into it. Like, Brian's getting me like, if he was like, you want to change your mind? I'd be like, mm, <laughs> yeah, he's, got, he's bringing up some good points because they would like PCO. It's kind of like his last run. The man's one bad moonsault away from like, yo, I'm done with this. <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, I was going to say some soon. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of true. It's like, try to get the most out of this, out of this guy as you can while you have him. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Enterprise, man. That's the first one where we're all different. So I've got it marked down here. Mark it down, folks. All three of us are not agreeing on this one. One more point I want to make. I think God is going to win because they got that Bullet Club block party the next day. They're going to show with both belt, both sets of belts. <laughs> you think they're going to put over some YouTube stuff? They ain't going yeah. for that. Yeah. <laughs> they're not going for that. <laughs> yeah, Jado and Gato getting desperate these days, man. They trying to keep everybody happy. <laughs> That's right. Oh, you make man. sure you subscribe to everything pro wrestling because I'm going to review this right after the show. <laughs> so you make sure that happens. But that's hey, my, int- my pick. My pick of, of Villain Enterprises. I'm picking this for. I mean, it's it, it, it factors in to a pick that I've got coming up. You, I, I see big things for Villain Enterprises. And you, this pick affected Ooh. the same pick that I'm talking about too. It's the exact same thing. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. But before we do, guys. Let's talk about what's going on in the basketball world real quick. You've got March Madness. you got the Sweet 16. And when you need something to listen to for audio, you got to go to Everything College Basketball. Everything College Basketball is the podcast that I trust the most with my good friends, Josh Burton, Peyton Burton, and Tyler Cook as the host. These guys have been on fire. They've been on my show. I've been on their show. You guys make sure you check out everything college basketball. Um, really good stuff, especially when you when you want to get your knowledge up about college hoops while we go into the final four. Rob, you got anything you want to say about everything college basketball? Duke shouldn't have won on Sunday. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> hey, I'm a Tar Heel fan, so shout out to everyone in the group who supports UNC. Yeah, I know I'm from Buffalo. I don't care. Hey, they got smacked. Hey, you knew that was gonna happen though. Not against that bad. Texas. You dude, Not that bad. dude, it's Buffalo. But at the end of the day, make sure you check out everything college basketball. And after this next short message, we will be right back to give you part three, the final part of the G1 Supercard preview. Let's kick it to my man, Marty the Moth Casaus. Welcome, welcome. This is Marty the Moth Casals from Lucha Underground and more. And you're watching Conrad Cushman and everything pro wrestling. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and we're back. Big shout out to my guest a couple weeks ago, Marty the Moth Casals. Excellent guest. I'm actually doing his diet right now that he gave me. I am doing intermittent fasting. So after 8 p.m. tonight, I won't be eating any more food. So shout out to your tips, Marty. Make sure you check him out on Twitch. Um, But we're talking about match number eight. It is for the Rev Pro British Heavyweight Championship. Show respect, boys. It is Zack Sabre Jr. versus the ace of New Japan, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Where do we start? Rob, take I love it. Oh. He's, he's one of my favorite wrestlers right now. This guy, he's he's the man. He's the man. If I if I had a promotion, he'd be, you know, one of my top my top cats. Uh, but he's not winning this. Ooh. 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 Oo
I told you how it's gonna get. No, no, this is this is this is my boldest prediction, and I'm doing that. So I'm so yeah, I'm, I'm predicting that Tanahashi's gonna walk away with this title because New Japan they have a show in London in the UK in August, and it's an important show for them. And I think maybe the, this is I'm just just a guess, just a hunch, but I think they'll put this title on Tanahashi. And they'll defend that belt when New Japan goes to uh to UK in, in August. So that's my prediction. This will be a great match. I mean, I've seen these guys wrestle a couple different times uh, in, New, in New Japan. Uh, so I know it'll be good. The work's going to be amazing. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Tanahashi busts out a high fly flow, maybe a couple of them, and gets the one, two, three. Brian, my friend, you are bold. Mm. You are <laughs> bold. He came right in with that. Rob, I, I'm going to kick it to you now. Well, I got, I'm sticking with Zack Zaber Jr. on this one. Uh, he didn't get this bill not so long ago, right? Uh, he got it. Wrestle Kingdom? Yeah. Was it Wrestle Kingdom? Yeah, he beat yeah, uh, yeah, it was a couple Ishii. months. Ishii. I don't know. I got to stick with Zack Zaber, man. I know Tanahashi's the ace, but he's getting folded up. I'm with Rob on this. I'm going with Zack Sabre Jr. I feel like his stock has risen with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, I always say this every time. He reminds me of Brian Danielson. In like those good to great years of ROH. Sorry, I didn't mean when to he, bury the current ROH, but when he used to wrestle in the sweatpants. <laughs> yeah, Brian Danielson was the man, dude. And um I got so fucking five. <laughs> <laughs> dude, and I think he's been on the rise for Suzuki Gun. Like he's been featured in more prominent matches, I think, within the past year. Like they're showcasing him like he's a top competitor for that group. I really think that the accolades for both are truly amazing. I know Tanahashi won the world title and then Lost it to Jay White. Hey, hey, chill out, Rob. <laughs> chill out, Rob. Don't get mad. Chill out. Um, but I still see Tanahashi as the ace, and they'll have to figure out something else for him to do. I'm going with Zack Sabre Jr. I know it's not the uh, popular pick as well, but Brian came well, in no, bold. I mean, Brian came in bold. <laughs> like, I mean, it's a bold pick, but look, I hope that I'm wrong. You know what I mean? Like I, I hope Zack Sabre uh, you know, keeps his title. Because like I said, he's, he's one of my favorites. But I don't know. I just – I don't know. I, I think if – And, and you know what? I can see New Japan okaying that too because Tanahashi really doesn't have a lot to do at this moment. Like, who's he going to feud with? Who Who's the second top guy? I mean, maybe you could mix it up with some of the guys in the next match, but other than that, eh, maybe they could. I mean, you brought up some good points, so I respect that. Uh, let's talk about the IWGP Intercontinental Ooh, Championship let me, let me start match. This one. Let me start oh, this one. Oh, hold on. Go ahead. You introduced <laughs> the competitors. He, All right. He so we happy. Got- the reigning defending champion Tetsuya Naito versus Cody Ibushi, the Golden Lover. Ah, <laughs> uh, I feel like I feel like this match shouldn't even be happening. I feel like this IC title. <laughs> okay, hear me out. I feel like this IC title is a consolation prize for both of these guys because Naito should have won that uh, heavyweight championship. What was that Wrestle Kingdom twelve? Yeah, he should have won that belt there. <laughs> Cody Ibushi should be challenging for the belt now. I don't know what's, what. What Gato's got going on over there? But. Well, I feel bad for Coda because I think that Kenny Omega stuff was leading to a big storyline, and then it kind of just went. I, those two were going to headline the Garden, I think. Yeah, they were going to headline this show, and that might have been Kenny's last match with this promotion. But I, Kenny's great. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, I got. I'm going to take Naito in this one. Really, I'm going to take Naito. Mm. It's because, like I said, mm. they both deserve better. And this, like this belt, no, no disrespect to this title, but it feels like a consolation prize for both of these guys. You miss when MVP had it, don't you? I do actually. <laughs> <laughs> I miss when him and Shelton were the tag champs too. Ah, uh, when sure Shelton got little uh, titles, got more prestige than WWE, right? I Tra- mean, I see what you're oh, absolutely. These, these guys, you know, being better spots. I agree with you. I think. You know, especially about Naito not winning that wrestling in that year. Uh, it was time. Have. It was time. Yeah. The crowd died after that, too. They were just like, oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Uh, you, you never see Okada get a reaction like that. <laughs> yo, yo, don't disrespect Okada. I'm not. I'm just all saying. All right. Don't, don't. Were you guys watching the New Japan Cup at all that ran a couple weeks back? I was in and out of it, but same. Mm-hmm. Right, because these two wrestled, uh, I think it was like the was it the first round or 
second round? First round. I have it in my notes already. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that match was freaking just incredible. So, I mean, yeah, this match is going to be dope. I mean, even if they just redid what they did, you know, a few weeks back, this will, this could end up being the best, you know, overall match of the, of the entire show. But yeah, picking, deciding on who's going to, you know, win this, this is, this is hard, man. Because, I mean, I could, there's a case that could be made for either guy. But, is he reading my notes? He's got to be reading my notes. Is that camera pointing like he's, yeah, he's like checking every box, like in a row, too. Well, no, because, I mean, I'm looking at... I mean, Kota Bushi, he actually just signed a contract with New Japan, which is like the first like the first time he's ever like really committed to a promotion. Like, he's just signed a contract with New Japan. And I think that's the reason why he's not going to be able to get more than one match in the entire show. Because they were like, well, we're not sure we want to put the title on you, but, you know, you're unwilling to sign a contract with us. Now that he has... You know, I don't know, maybe now is the time. You know what? Okay, fuck it, yeah. Coda's winning this because Naito is over enough in a way where he does not need that championship. Uh, and potentially, by taking the title off of him, hopefully maybe he can put him back into the thick of things uh, as far as the IWGP championship uh, down the line. See, but there's, uh, a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of people you can put in that title picture right now, considering who's the champ right now, but... <laughs> You shut your <laughs> mouth. He agreed with me. I'm with Brian. I think it's time for Kota Ibushi. I, Naito's had that belt, and I don't know what more he can do for it at this point. Uh, like yeah, He can destroy bad. it. He, has, he, he can throws that it. thing around. <laughs> Get this fucking thing out of here. I love that he disrespects the belt, right? though, a little bit. Like In my heart, I'm just like, damn, that's kind of cool. But, yeah, I got Ibushi winning this. Brian has basically touched on every single thing that I wanted to say with this. Um, I think Abushi signing like puts more faith in me that he can get more matches where he wins titles now to where they're like, yeah, we yeah. trust this guy. He can do this. Um, and it will be his crowning, uh, his crowning moment in New Japan now that he's a regular, you know, uh, a full time active roster member. And like I said, Naito, he does. Naito is like their Chris Jericho. The, the motherfucker is so over. Wins and losses really don't matter to him. I mean, his whole tranquilo thing, like he can just. You know, uh, he they lost his own effect, his character, his push, how the fans perceive him. Uh, so I think, yeah, this will be a great match. Crowning new IC title in Ibushi, and boom. I think, that, I think that's how you do it. I couldn't have said it better myself, sir. Match number 10 on this show. You think this show's going to be four hours? Random thought. It, it'll get up there. All I right. think so. Yeah. And I think it'll be worth it. Yeah. I just don't want to see any eight-hour shows. WWE, please, Wait till please season, don't guy. do it. I know, I know. I just, I have to bring it up, dude. The show lengths are freaking bad. I mean, if they were good. Yeah. No, I mean, if. WWE would say, oh, well, okay, we won't give you eight hours. Yeah, we're playing on a nine-hour show. <laughs> oh, God. We're back at the pre-show right now with uh, Booker T. <laughs> Let me stop. But ROH title match, three-way. Speaking of four hours. If you go back to the ROH 17th anniversary match, I was on Twitter at that time. I have never seen wrestling fans like go on such a roller coaster. By the way, <laughs> Brainbuster Radio, I think they started this today. It said uh, places not to look for love. And <laughs> it said uh, wrestling Twitter, definitely one of the best answers people had that thing going all day <laughs> today. Because this match, so so many people were like, yeah, hopefully this world title match is cool. They're starting it right now. And I was like, oh, cool. It's getting started right now. Fans are like, man, this match is boring. Nothing's happening. And then also, yo, this match is getting really good. The kickouts and everything else. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. They're like, man, it's getting boring again. I'm so tired of watching this. And then towards the end, man, kick out after kick out. Who's going to win? Could Taven finally win the belt? And then I'm just like, dude, I've never seen fans switch up. I'm like, dude, you just said you hated it. Like, I, I can show you the tweet if you want. Like, I'll take a picture of it. <laughs> fans were just going nuts for this. It was a really long match, and it got real crazy. So this is why Matt Taven's in this match. Marty, what what did Marty win to get this? I can't remember. Some contendership uh, or he, a he, he, Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Marty won that tournament, and now we have a three-way ladder match. Dude, dude, this this is getting deep, man. This is hard to pick a winner because I'll go first for once. Lethal's title reign has been cool. I love Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal's one of my favorite people. Um, after TNA kicked him to the curb, 
they made a big mistake. I thought Letha was a talent who could go anywhere he wanted, sign, and it was happening for him. Letha's been a solid champion, someone that you can trust, put behind you, and he's going to carry the brand with respect. I'm starting to feel like Lethal's time has come, though, to the point where it's like, all right, dude, can we get someone new? We need something fresh happening here. Is it Matt Taven? I'm not a Matt Taven guy. I'll be the first to tell you. Like, I don't see it, dude. I just don't see it with the man. I don't, I don't think he's that great. That he anniversary won- show over. He won me. I, listen, I said it on my review for it. Matt Taven won me over with that match. Like, I'm like, you know what? The kid's got something. He's not horrible. And I've never said he's a bad wrestler. Yeah. Matt Taven's just kind of like, I don't know how to put it, man. Like, you really like chocolate chip cookies. You really like oatmeal cookies. And then someone comes up to you with those plain butter cookies for, like, toddlers. And I'm just kind of like, I like it, but it's missing something. It needs a little bit more (laughs) oomph. And Matt Taven is that. Like, the kingdom thing, it's not working for me. It's just not, dude. Matt Taven's worse than oatmeal cookies, though? (laughs) Yeah. I, with all due respect, I, I, that was an analogy, <laughs> but I just don't see it. And to me, Marty Scroll is the man right now. He is the hottest thing in pro wrestling. I don't care if he's not going to sign with you. We all know, right, that it's a foregone conclusion that this man's not staying, right? Like, he's already in the being the elite, like, little video game sketch art, oh, so they yeah. do it. It's like, dude, he's leaving. He's going to probably be an executive vice president of, like, clothing or <laughs> ring post or something. Umbrellas. Yeah, umbrellas. Hey. He's going to make it rain well, probably. March. Yeah, he does. Marty's the man, and I think that you got to give him the belt. Go with the hot hand. I'm picking Marty to win this. That's just me. All right, well, I'm going to go right back off what you said. I'm sticking with Jay Lethal because they've been riding this history wave, his history-making title reign for the longest, and why stop now? He, he did break Samoa Joe's record. I don't like when they do like little corny stuff, though, where it's like, most combined days. I'm like, hold on, man. Joe's reign was one. Like, he beat everybody's yeah. ass. That was just one. <laughs> I'm sticking with Jay Lethal, though. Brian, it's on uh, you, man. And yeah, please, so, please give me your thoughts on Matt Taven, too, so we can save this. Redeem me, please. Oh, yeah, I, def- I definitely will. I definitely will. Uh, for, you know, I, I got I to gotta give props to, uh, to Ring of Honor for putting the title on Jay. Uh, I think Jay Lethal's been a, a very good, you know, uh, champion for them. And it's nice to see a uh, person of color, you know, at the top of a wrestling promotion that's not throwing pancakes or uh, shucking and jiving. So uh, I really appreciate and respect that aspect of how they booked him and used him. And like you said, Jay Lethal is an amazing uh, performer. So props to him and his reign. Uh, I'm with you, Conrad. I think this is Marty Scurll's, uh This is his time. And although he, yes, all indications point that he probably will. Join up with his, with his with his homies and all elite, but at the same time, this could be ROH's way of kind of saying, "Look, you know, we can put the title on you. Maybe we can negotiate. Maybe we can work something out to keep you in the fold." And this might be their their attempt to do such a thing, which is why I picked Dylan Enterprises to win the uh, the, the the tag titles, the ROH and the uh, you know IWGP. So you I'm expecting a big night for this faction. I think they. Walk up. I think as a faction, they walk away with the tag titles, and Marty is going to be crowned the new ROH title or champion. I like it. I think even I'm going to take a business approach to this. All right, right, good. So we're all three kind of in agreement. Then, like Matt Taven's not. Yeah, he doesn't do it for me. I mean, yeah, he's 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 a fine, he's a fine uh, wrestler and all that. It's like I have no. I just he's like Matt. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, no disrespect to you. He's a good hand. Ooh, <laughs> he, gave him, he gave him the Jim Cornette Triple H. He's the guy that works with the guy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I think, I think, I think Marty's cool. If it's, and if it's not Marty, then yeah, it'll be. Nah. I don't see Matt Taven being the ROH uh, champion. I don't know. We talking not all this shit. We, honestly, probably not ever. We talking all this shit. Matt Taven's gonna light it up. Watch, Watch yeah. this. Yo, yeah, Matt Taven. Moon song, triple moon stomp. <laughs> Where did he learn this? Son of a bitch. EPW show, you suck. You suck. Uh, give me okay. a follow on Twitter. Buy them shirts. Yeah. <laughs> Shilling the merch. I like it. But real quick, though, I want to bring this up with Marty, too. Brian brought up a good point of ROH extending that arm. I think that this extends the arm even for AEW. 
think about it like this. In my mind, if I'm a businessman, I own ROH, right? I'm playing fire promoter right now. I'm into this. So if it's me, I would offer Marty a contract to stay. Absolutely. But then after I'm like, Marty, listen, we know you're going to sign with AEW. They probably got a spot over there for you. They probably got a, a chair sitting there waiting for you in the background. I'm sure we'll see it on being the elite as soon as this contract get ready to come up. Fine. I would say, listen, tell your boys we want to talk to them. Bring them in. And then you say, New Japan, we need to talk to you too. Let's all get into a room and let's figure out how to make this shit work. You can definitely do something. If all three of these guys teamed up, you already know Impact wants to get in on this. Like Don Callis is like, please, <laughs> that, I'm uh, good. <laughs> Eric Andre meme, let me in, let <laughs> me in. <laughs> yes. Everybody's going to want to work with them. If they work together, I think they could be a problem oh, for absolutely. the machine that we're not going to talk about does anymore. does New Japan want to work with AEW? I feel like they're still bitter about that. Listen, you're going to have to get over that. The, you know what? Let the tears come later. You got you to gotta break bread together right now, and I think divide and conquer. They'll make There's it happen. There's more of a chance of, uh, of AEW doing you know, future business with New Japan than with ROH. I think those – I think there was, like, legit – bad blood between ROH and um, our management, at least, and all the league wrestling. Um, so I, I, I would be shocked if I saw them try to partner up. And especially if, if, and if all the league takes off the way that I'm hoping and that how they seem to be positioning themselves, you know, they're going to be bigger than Ring of Honor anyway. Probably going to right out the gate in terms of their reach. If they get, you know, depend on their TV. Did you say Michael so Nakasawa? Get, <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, right. So, the business, so, but again, that's all dependent on you know their TV deal, their how they're gonna you know distribute their their uh, their product. But I mean, just it, it already seems like they're at a well, I can't say already, but I just I predict that they will have a uh, bigger presence than Ring of Honor, if not out the gate, but soon enough. Because they're gonna so, jump in the know. pool. It goes back to that analogy. AEW has jumped in the pool. New Japan has jumped in the pool in the United States. Ring of Honor still dipping their toe along the East Coast. Yeah, like, nah. uh, how much do you think Sinclair has to do with that, though? A lot. Yeah, they're the owners. Yeah, they're not willing, to invest. Yeah, they're yeah. Not willing to, to invest the amount of money to kind of grow and, you know, get their product out there. Uh, but again, hey, maybe, it must be doing good for them. Uh, like, they must be in the black. You know, uh, they don't seem to be losing money. So they're probably looking, hey, we're making a little bit of money. We're not losing any. So why? That's such a good thing. And, 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 and if they're cool with that, fine. You know, but I think AEW has, you know, uh, uh, more grand ambitions than and, ROH. And everybody they've hired have probably promoted slow growth. Cornette. Um, anybody they brought in that was kind of an old head you would consider nowadays in wrestling, they've probably taught them, like, listen, you need to grow slow because if you try to do too much, WWE is going to take your talent and buy it, and then it's going to be game over. Is that what you want? Well, no. Uh, so at least they got pride in their company. I'll give them that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But and, you know, even if and even if Marty doesn't, I mean, even if he does leave when his contract is up, I mean, again, it's you know, if I'm if I'm if I'm the promoter of, of Ring of Honor, if I'm working for this company, it's my job to create interest in this product. I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna I'll put the title on him. I've got you now. I'm gonna maximize you and this factor to the best of my abilities. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna book, knowing that you know six, seven months from now you're gonna be gone. I've got you now, and now I want to make money with you. So put the title on them. Uh, it definitely. I. I think it's the best business decision, to be honest with you. I mean, like you said, Marty Scurll. He's one of probably their most over uh, guys on the roster. Uh, yeah, man. I think. I think it's a. I think it's the right. It's the right move for Ring of Honor. Uh, no matter. No matter what Marty does uh, after his contract is up. Whoop, whoop. All right, so <laughs> let's get to the main event, guys. It's for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> this is the easiest match to predict. Oh, peace. Jay White, the current champion, uh, versus Okada. Rob, I, I'm going to let you... <laughs> Kick this off because we're gonna have to end on a happy note. So me or Brian are definitely gonna have to do that. So the bane of my wrestling experience, Jay freaking White. <laughs> I hate the ground this man walks on. <laughs> <laughs> he he's the splinter in my toe. <laughs> he is. Go ahead, you go on a rant. Go ahead, let oh, it out. 
<laughs> this motherfucker right here. <laughs> what the, what has he done? <laughs> Why do you hate him? Why do you hate him? We, this is intervention time. Okay, because his character is shit. <laughs> this little kiwi crushing son of a mother. Ah. He's he's okay. He's like 2016 Dean Ambrose. Damn, come on. They trying to get that man to belt. He was running around with uh what's his name? The dude that was sending dick pics to the little girl. <laughs> no chin. What the hell's his name? James Ellsworth. James Ellsworth. <laughs> <laughs> what Ambrose is running around with him. That this is Jay White to me. Oh, oh man. Like he's boring in the ring, except for that Wrestle Kingdom match because he killed it. I'll give him his props on that one. That whole elite versus the Bullet Club or the Firing Squad was a wasted story, and I blame him. And even though it's probably not his fault, it's Gato's fault, but I, I'm just not a fan. I don't see the appeal. Who's winning? Who's winning this match? Jay White. All right. As much as it pains me to say it. I can't imagine. That must have been very painful for you to have to. I'm sweating right now. Don't get don't get hot about it. <laughs> Damn. All right. My man B will. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> Go put some love back in this show. Well, you know, I have uh, I got I got I got, I, I admire and I respect the passion radiating from you, Rob, your hatred of this man. Respect that man. I I don't like Jay White, nor do I uh you know, hey, like, I, I, Jay White is just Jay White to me. I, I haven't really formed any kind of hard opinion about him yet. Um, he's, he's, he's good in the ring. But, yeah, I get you. Like, I'm not really into the whole Switchblade character. I'm exactly. Just like, yeah, like you. We're trying to figure out what exactly that is. It's kind of cheesy, in my opinion. Uh, but the guy's a hell of a talent. And he's obviously somebody that uh, Gato and, and Jado, like, they, he's their, he's their, he's their new guy. And uh, I don't, and this is his first title defense also. You know, that's something that, you know, has to be put out there. I mean, I, not that it's, in, I, you know, it's not in a, they're booking to have him lose this right out the gate, but I just don't see it happening. Um, I think this is going to be an amazing match. The only thing that kind of hurts this is that it's still, this match is still feels real, you know, real fresh to me. Like I just saw it, you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm not all that excited for this particular match, especially, you know, Knowing our, you know, my prediction of Jay White winning, I kind of, uh, I was really hoping that Sonata was going to win that New Japan Cup, even though I knew that shit wasn't going to happen. Because I think that would have been more into that match against Jay than uh, than Okada and White. But that being said, this will be good. This will be good. These guys are both good at what they do. But yeah, I predict that uh, that Jay White retains this and uh, keeps the uh, keeps the title, man. Now does you come up. Hold on, before we get to CJ. Does he retain clean, or does Gato get involved, or? Oh, there's gonna be some. There's gonna be some shit. Shenanigans. Nah, it's some it's the Bullet Club. Now, how do you yeah. how do you go about this whole Okada redemption story that they've been trying to tell? Do you think he's bigger than the title? Has he reached that point? Because he he is uh, he is New Japan to me. Yeah, I mean, is he bigger than the title? I, he probably, I don't think he's bigger than the title. He's bigger than He's uh, he's on par with it, I think. I think he's over in a way that, you know, uh, and that's why, yeah, like he doesn't need the title again. I mean, they're still trying to make Jay White a thing. So to take the belt off of him, which is basically undo all the amount of uh, effort that you put into his build so far. And that's the um, reason why I picked Jay White as well, because stick yeah. with your guns, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm going to agree with you guys. I got Jay White winning this as well. Uh, tough pick. I feel like they need strong heels, though, in New Japan. That's my main reason for picking it as well. There's not too many. We've mentioned Sonata, Naito, Cobb. Ibushi. I mean, you got Osprey, Ibushi, but lots of baby faces that we just named. There's no heels, so I'm predicting Jay White, and he's got a ton of people that he can go up against after this. I'm with Brian. I'm tired of this. And you can eventually still go back to the storyline of Okada needs to beat Jay White before he can get back to the promised land. I think that it's a good story. Keep playing off of it, and it could be a big deal later on down the line. Yeah, I agree. So, Spade, you mentioned uh, his next challenges. So, who do you think is White's next uh, challenges? Um, well, you guys picked Ibushi before, so I'm hoping either Naito or Sonata, but... 
I think it's Naito. Yeah, I think Naito, I think Naito is uh, like he's got to be the first or the next in line. Now, if he uh, gets it, he better win it too. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, because he should have won it last year. Naito's long overdue. Um, same thing with this. I hope you guys enjoyed this preview for the G1 Supercard. It's going to be a hell of an event. Um, immediately after the event, I plan on doing a YouTube review of it. So whoever is around, if you want to join me, send me a message. We'll see what we can work on. I'll most likely be on that. My man. So we've already got a guest. That's one. But if you're around, hit me up. Throw you on the review. Uh, we'll talk about this. I think it's going to be a great show. This show needs to deliver WrestleMania weekend. People need to walk away from this at least talking about one of the matches from here or the event itself. Um, with all that being said, guys, I'll kick it to you guys for your quick shout outs. Uh, let's start with Rob first, then Brian. All right, so let me give me a shout out to EPW. Shout out to the group. Shout out to Teespring. Buy them shirts. We can be working right now. We got, we got some stuff on the way. It's T-Public, good sir. It's T-Public, whatever, man. All right, all right. Just you know, you know. Sure. links will be in the description. You know where to find us. Shout out to Brandon, Shower City Knockerball. You're in the background. They they know. They know you're here. <laughs> they know you're here, Brandon. <laughs> uh, they, they know. Brian, what do you got? Uh, uh, not much, man. Shout out to the two of you. You know, Rob, for designing those shirts. Them shits look dope. Uh, Conrad, just keep doing what you're doing, man. Uh, congrats on the uh, Brain Buster. Uh, was it Brain Buster Radio? Yes, sir. Or network or, yeah, Bra Brain Buster Radio. And uh, thanks for having me on, man. I love, I love, uh, I love talking wrestling. Uh, I really enjoy talking wrestling with you guys. Wrestling is a gift that keeps on giving. In my circle that I can talk wrestling with. So uh, it is a good outlet for me. Brian, you're always welcomed on the podcast. I'm pretty sure they're going to hear from you again very, very soon, as I said. <laughs> um, but I always enjoy talking wrestling with you. And, guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. Once again, make sure you subscribe if this is your first time listening and you like what you hear. Also, make sure you give a subscribe to Brain Buster Radio. I will be featured on there on Saturdays. Also, shout out to... Everybody who loves pro wrestling, this is a big week for anybody who's a content creator, a fan of pro wrestling. This WrestleMania weekend is always a good time, so make sure you're around your loved ones and appreciate the moment that you have with them. With all that being said, guys, enjoy the show, and you never know when I'm going to drop some more content, so make sure you're ready all the way up into WrestleMania weekend. We're out. Peace.